So, this is the course of Newtonian mechanics with examples. In last week, uh, there is a third week, uh, we started uh, studying the uh, statics problems where the systems are at rest in mechanical equilibrium. So, this week we shall uh, continue uh, studying those problems uh, with uh, different approaches. So, in the last lecture, we uh, started discussing uh, the example of an in important practical engineering structure which is called the truss or a framework. So, just quickly we described few examples and defined the problem, the problem that we want to analyze. So, today uh, we are going to uh, first we are going to take a example to uh, still go step by step and understand how to uh, analyze this problem. So, this is the uh, problem that just quickly let me recall what how we define this problem. So, we will assume that there is some structure like a bridge and the whole structure is at rest. So, that we can apply the conditions of force and torque balance and there are two rules that you need to remember that total force on any single beam is 0 and the total force on any joint or support or node is 0. So, this is also called uh, this uh, the, the strategy that you are going to use is also called the method of joints. And one more important point that the external loads are given and our goal is to find the internal tension forces in each beam and the forces contact forces at the joints. So, here is an example of a simple bridge. So, this is a very kind of a toy model of a bridge. So, this is a bridge which is uh, this type of bridge is called a uh, I think it is called a cantilever uh, um, bridge. So, this is different from a suspension bridge which can you can think of as a hanging cable. So, here this bridge is supported on both ends and it is a very simple structure. So, this you can often see like a railway bridge uh, in our country. Um, so, this is supported by three equilateral triangles which is made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 beams. So, assume that all 7 beams are massless and the connection between any two them is a hinge. So, these are like pin joints. So, the con supports are like pin joints. Now, there is an external load a car of. So, this this black uh, black object is a car of mass m which is sit standing still at the middle precisely at the middle of the bridge. Now, given this situation find the tension T in the beams. So, this is the this is the question. Now, it is also given that we should assume that the supports at the end. So, these are the supports the joints that supports the bridge at the two side. Um, there is no horizontal forces. So, this is like a roller type support. So, how to solve this problem? So, the first thing that we should note is that we should start by choosing our system. So, in this example we are going to choose the entire bridge as our system. Now, if the structure is very uh, lengthy or complicated, then you can also choose a section of your framework as your system. Now, we note down two important in clue given in the problem is that the all beams are massless, which means the tension is uniform along the beams. So, all the all the tension forces are uniform along the beams. Now, there is this external force. What are the external forces? So, the now once we determine the system, then automatically we also everything that is outside our system is our surrounding. So, this load is not part of the system. So, this car which is of mass m is not part of our chosen system. So, when you analyze the problem, uh, so you should 
make this kind of mental map to sort of highlight this point. Now, once we define the system, then we need to list out all the interactions, what are the forces interacting in the system. Now, here let us say if I take the entire bridge as the system, then the forces are actually there are some force as you show in this picture. So, there are force on so this this joint this is a support. So, it exerts uh, some force on this bridge and similarly on the other side uh, let us call that Q. Mm, so, in this case also it exerts some force on the bridge. On top of that the car is also exerting a force downward on the bridge that is a contact force. Now, since the so this force is also unknown, but we can determine the uh, the contact force you can replace it by the weight of the car. Why? Because suppose this is my car and then let us draw the free body diagram of the car. So, then on this car there are two forces. So, one force it is its weight m g. So, then this is an interaction with the, uh, sur uh, the surrounding of the car. In the surrounding of the car not the bridge, but the car there are two uh, important objects. One is the earth which is pulling it uh, exerting a force gravitational force m g and the other is this. So, the car is also sort of interacting with the uh, with the bridge and let us say this force is n. So, then um, so this force is a contact force by bridge. Now, I draw it more clearly. So, this force is a contact force on the car and I also draw another force. So, this force is the uh, Newton's third law pair of this in contact interaction between the car and the bridge. So, this is the force on the bridge. by the car. So, this is the for which is force which is required for our analysis. Now, if we if the car is at rest then we know that the total force on the car is 0. So, that means n minus w must be 0 which means n equal to w. So, this is the magnitude of the contact force and hence the hence the we know the magnitude of the uh, force on the bridge by the car which is also w that is mg and hence now and the direction must be downwards. So, now so the direction is downwards this is important because so to in this problem of truss the directions can be tricky this is important. So, you must pay close and that is why in in order to reduce conf avoid confusion you must have a clear idea about define your system very very clearly. Only then the directions will be very clear. So, if I take the whole bridge as a, at a, as a whole as my system then these are the external forces. In the given information so and I have drawn this diagram here, uh, here to denote these external forces by the blue. Now, uh, so this is given. Uh, now, the problem asks to calculate the uh, force internal forces the tension forces in the beam. Now, in this case uh, in order to uh, the strategy is so now you sort of uh, take each node as your system and each node as your system. If you take each node as your system
and then we need to draw the free body diagram of that particular node and apply the conditions of force and torque balance and then we get we can write down the some equations of the unknown tension forces and once we find all the equations then we can solve them to calculate the unknown forces. So, this is the general strategy. So, now which node you should start with? You should start with a, a node on which the external force is active that is that always uh, simplifies that is a in, in important trick to remember. So, here I am starting on this particular node. Now, in this type of in this uh, frame stress problem what is tricky is to get the direction of the um, the internal force tensions uh, right which means at a given node whether the force and along the beam are along like away from the node or towards the node. So, whether this is a in our lang language defined earlier whether this is a tension force or a compression force. Now, uh, in this particular case let us say we take A the node A on which where the car is standing let us take that as our system. Then there are uh, three forces acting at this node. One force is evidently the force on the uh, on the uh, on the bridge on the support by the car which we have just found this is equal to mg and it is directed downwards. The second force is the tension along the beams. So, there are two beams which are sorry there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 beams which are along uh, which are uh, connected at this node A, but in the given problem it is given that in this these two beams there are no horizontal force it is given in the problem. So, we ignore these two beams so then only two beams remaining and let us uh, consider that the tension force in the beams are T1 and T2 respectively in beams AB and AC. Then from this picture by geometry so all of these beams are of equal length so these all these triangles are equilateral triangles. So, these angles are 60 all the angles are 60 degree. Then, um, so we consider the force balance equation for this node A. Uh, so, to balance this force uh, mg uh, which is downwards intuitively it is clear that the direction of this force T1 and T2 must be away from the uh, support A. So, this uh, the horizontal component of this T2 must be T2 cos 60 degree because this is 60 degree and similarly the horizontal component of the force T1 which is acting in the beam AB uh, should be T1 cos 60 degree. And since the node is at equilibrium so if that means if we do a horizontal force balance so what we find that these two force must cancel each other. So, that is T1 cos 60 degree must be equal to T2 cos 60 degree and it follows that these two tension force are equal in magnitude ma magnitude and let us call that T. Now, if we do a vertical force balance it is a force balance in the vertical direction. So, then uh, we see that the, um, the vertical component of this force T 1 is. So, this is T 1. So, this is T 1 sin. So, this is 60 degree. So, this is T 1 sin 60 degree and similarly for T 2 this is 60 degree. So, this is T 2 sin 60 degree and there is a force mg downwards. So, these two vertical components must is must be balancing this downward force mg by the car on the bridge. So, this is not the weight of the car it is the contact force by the car on the bridge. So, then we can write down the vertical force balance condition and we, if we apply that T 1 is equal to T 2 which is equal to T then it follows by solving this equation that this unknown the tension at the each of the tension T must be equal to mg by root 3. Now, I will give you as an exercise that you can sort of 
uh, see uh, you can verify now take this other nodes uh, node b as your system um, and then there there are three beams which are connected uh, at uh, node node b and i have shown now remember that if we apply our rule 2 that so the if we want to know the force uh, acting on the node b then we need to determine the the force direction of force at the node uh, at the node b by the beam and on the beam and if we apply the force balance condition on on the on the beam ab in total force by the beam must be zero so that means if it is experiencing the if the beam is experiencing so then so if we know the uh, direction of the force t1 at the node a uh, then the direction of the force uh, on the node b which is the other side other end of this beam must be uh, opposite and it must be equal in uh, magnitude as well hence we if we know this force then we immediately know the magnitude of this force must also be mg by root 3 and so, uh, similarly you can consider the other nodes uh, and each of the nodes so take b and then take c and then write down the force balance conditions and from which uh, you can get the what are these tension forces in the other beam elements. So, I will uh, leave as an exercise uh, another problem. So, this is a slightly more uh, uh, longer slightly more uh, complicated uh, truss uh, with same number of beams 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, same number of beams, but in this case instead of uh, uh, the uh, so the total external forces are slightly different. So, the supports are now no longer at the two ends and the base, but they are on one side at the two ends of this beam uh, D and E. So, this is the difference and the other difference is that like in the previous example, you have an external force which is acting on this uh, framework at the node C which is uh, 20 kilo Newton. But in addition, there is another external force which is acting at the end A, which is 30 kilo Newton. So, note that the, the arrows represents the red arrows represents the force, external force both in magnitude as well as direction. So, the question is that given the structure and the supports, compute the force in each member of this loaded cantilever truss. So, this is kind of a bridge or a cantilever which is supported. So, cantilever is a structure which is supported at one end and it is kind of hanging the other part is hanging uh, uh, in the air and by the method of joints. So, one thing you must remember here is that the in general you, you should not assume that the uh, tensions in all the beams are same. You have to assume like we did here when we started that the tensions are different and then if the problem shows the calculation shows that the tension turns out to be uh, same then it is uh, well and good. So, I am not going to solve this problem because this is meant to be sort of uh, give you an exercise practice to sort of write down the force and uh, torque balance conditions. So, you do not need any torque balance conditions here in this particular problem at each node, node by node. So, here instead I am going to give you a few hints of how to uh, approach this problem. So, first if you take your define your system as before and the surrounding. So, let us say you take the entire structure A, B, D, E, A, B, uh, D, E, C, A as your system and that will give you an idea of what are the external forces acting on this uh, framework or the bridge. So, there are of course, the force T which is the because of the support uh, uh, this particular support which is supporting the structure and then there are other forces uh, the in the uh, due to the other uh, support at the point at the support E at the node E. Now, in so let us uh, so it is so I will give you a hint. So, assume that the supports the nature of the sub role uh, the contacts are the supports uh, this support and this supports 
are such that I mean the support at D and support at uh, E is such that these are the directions of those external force. Let's, uh, so, assume that you can assume that. So, there are at D there is only one force which is going along the length of this beam. At the joint E, this is a contact force has two components in general. One which is a let us define our x axis, the, this direction as our x axis and this direction as our y axis and then this is a horizontal component and a vertical component. So, now all, all you need to do is to go node by node, take each node and then apply the free body diagram at each node and write down the force balance conditions and make a list of which is the unknown. So, the tension forces are unknown and the external forces are given and then you have an equation and solve this equation to determine the unknown for, uh, unknown tensions. Now, here is a hint that which node you should start with. So, again you should start with, uh, it is easier to start with uh, nodes where the external forces are acting. So, let us start at node A and write down the draw the take the node A as your system. So, this is connected by two, let me complete the beam structure. So, it is connected by only two nodes, two beams. So, uh, write down the free force balance equations at node A, then go to node B, then go to node C and then go to node E instead of D. So, if you follow the node, your calculations will be uh, simple. So, uh, let um, we shall continue discussing some more aspects of uh, the this uh, truss structure in the next uh, lecture. Thank you.